If we use the UK as an example, because they got national data, 5% of people have diabetes. But among those who die with COVID, one third have diabetes. And the death rates, the complications rates are closely related to the control of the conditions. The relationship between COVID-19 and diabetes is bidirectional. Uh, early reports from China, particularly from Wuhan, uh, informed us that people with diabetes uh, got the disease more often and the outcomes were worse. And that's been replicated across the world in other such studies. We've also seen you know, that people uh, are precipitating diabetes. So type 1 diabetes has become more common because the disease precipitates it and people with diabetes get worse metabolic control. Um, one of the key findings has been that amongst the other risk factors for COVID, hyperglycemia, that's high blood glucose levels, also make the outcomes worse. Um, and conversely, hopefully, if we were to improve glucose levels, we could reduce the, uh, the risk for people uh, with COVID-19 and diabetes. One of the theories is that uh, the ACE2 receptor, which is linked to COVID-19, is one of the interfaces where COVID-19 upsets body um, resources, particularly um, the endothelial, that's the um, lining of the blood vessels. And that might explain why, particularly for people with type 2 diabetes, um, there is this unfortunate uh, increase in severity. And every day, thousands of them are dying silently with too little being done and too late. In fact, over the last three decades or so, there is so much evidence showing that if we can reduce the risk factors in these individuals, by uh, lowering the blood pressure, the glucose, the cholesterol, the use of essential medications, and also ensuring that we have the right system put in place to educate this individual and to ensure there is continuing care and self-management. The devastating complications of diabetes, such as heart disease, stroke, kidney failure, leg amputation, blindness, and to some degree cancer, can be reduced by more than 20 to 60%. Previous lifestyle might be more simple. You know, they're eating simple food, they're more physically active. And then suddenly, you know, as the economy improves, food becomes very abundant. The quality of food has changed. You know, the physical activity has changed. And yet biologically, they are not actually designed to handle that sort of situation. And on top of that, you see, there was all this economy as well. But at the same time, you know, the economy development is not actually accompanied by the investment in the healthcare system.
clearly it is a biological problem. These people have a biological defect where they cannot actually handle glucose effectively. And this tendency is unmasked, you know, in a highly urbanized area. Actually, the prevention, which involves medications and good care and education, is only a fraction of that cost. And if we do not actually invest in prevention, you know, the cost is going to continue to go up and the healthcare system is going to be unsustainable.